Hi there, this is Krasin. Today I will show you how to use the, the latest and greatest from Jenkins and Docker to create a continuous delivery pipeline for your application. Now Victor from CloudBees uh, created a similar workflow but his talk is quite compressed so I decided to simplify it so it's easy to understand and easy to follow. Uh, here is a link to his video if you want to watch it. First I'll show you the final result and how it all works and then I'll show you step by step how to get there. Now here I have a um, very simple um, Golang application with an integration test and a unit test and every time I make a change of the application uh, a new trigger will be built on the Jenkins swarm and when if, if the, the build is successful it will be deployed to the production server. So um, the Jenkins swarm consists of one master and three slaves. Each one has got a different label based, based on the, the pipeline step. So Docker production, Docker test and Docker um, integration. I'll make a simple change of the application and you will see what happens. Uh, so I'm changing the integration test, the unit test and then the application itself. Now this push will uh, trigger a new build. There it is. Now the build is running and when once it's complete the reply here will change to Pongo. While this is running I will explain you what's happening. The Jenkins file is used to uh, configure the job itself. What happens is that uh, I'm using a, a Jenkins plugin that will uh, scan my account and any project that with a Jenkins file in the root directory will be uh, pulled to the Jenkins master and it will, be, um, it will create a new job for it. Now in the Jenkins file itself, now the first step is to run a unit test, uh, a Golang unit test. Uh, the main difference is that a unit test, you're testing a simple function where the integration test tests uh, the application as a whole, how all the components work together. The unit test, um, all of the tests are running in a, in a Docker container and this is a simple uh, Golang container. Um, if it uh, succeeds, the next one is an integration test where we just uh, build the image, um, run the image, which basically runs uh, an HTTP server and then we run another, another image which makes an HTTP request uh, to the Golang server and it, um, it tests the replies. Now the, the next step is um, if the integration test fails, all it does is just some general cleanup of the images and the containers. The next step is to build the image and then push it to, uh, to the Docker Hub. I'm using um, uh, credentials set in the Docker Jenkins. Uh, the next step is uh, to test it in the staging uh, server. All of these are tests in a different server. If you see here, um, the one, um, the label of the node is a different. So, the unit test and the integration test is running the Docker test um, node, which is um, which is one of these. I think it's the first one. So this is Docker production. This is Docker tests and the other one is Docker uh, integration. Each of these steps are running a different in a different server, in a different Docker swarm. So Docker test, Docker stage, and Docker production. Docker stage, it's quite similar to Docker production. We just uh, the the only difference is that instead of running a, a service, we're running a, a container when we do the tests. And the final step is. Um, the Docker production where we, where we deploy the service and if the service doesn't exist we create it otherwise we update the image with the latest one from the successful build and then if this is succeed in this successful and it is uh, you can see that the, the reply is now changed to Pongo and the build
the build will be uh, shown as uh, a success. So now I will show you how it's all done. So the first thing we need to create is a Docker Jenkins master. Now here when creating the service we need to remember that we need port uh, 50,000. This is the port used by the Docker, uh, by the Jenkins slaves that will be connected to the Jenkins master. And um, another thing to note is that um, at the moment this service doesn't persist any data. So in the real production environment you will need to persist this folder. Either mount it on the host or use some Docker storage driver. Here I have three Docker swarms. Each one has got a single node in it. And in the first swarm I will create the Docker, uh, the Jenkins master. Now I have described, I have put uh, the, the minimum required um, Jenkins plugins in a short description of what each one of them does. Pipeline is the relatively new um, plugin from Jenkins that uses the new Groovy syntax to create uh, pipelines and organize the steps. The next one is the GitHub, so you can pull and push using the GitHub API and then the swarm plugin is the one used by the docker by the Jenkins slaves to connect to the master and With the github branch source plugin you just uh, enter the the name of the the account or the name of the organization It will scan for Jenkins files in the root uh, directory of each repo how we still need to install this one and this one Because they're not you couldn't select them in the initial plugins installations screen. And now it's time to add some Jenkins slaves and for this we'll use Docker and Docker secrets. The Docker image I created simply runs a Jenkins Swarm agent on each Docker node. When starting the Jenkins Swarm agent, you can use environment variables to set the labels, the number of executors, and the root folder for saving the data. And for the details how to connect to the Jenkins master, we use a Docker secret. The Docker secret should include the IP, username and password for the Jenkins master and it should exist on each Docker swarm you want to use as Jenkins slave. So now I'll, I will create it in all of the three swarms I have. The Jenkins Swarm agent is created as a, as a global service, which means that every time you add a new node to the Docker Swarm, you will have another Jenkins agent, Jenkins slave added to the, to the Jenkins master. Now, the only thing to remember here is that you need the label you set here will be the label set in the Jenkins slave. The image has a Docker client inside, so we need the Docker socket so we can uh, uh, execute commands on the host. Now this is not Docker in Docker. Basically all you have inside this image is a Docker client and the Docker client runs commands on the Docker host, on the host system. It's not inside the container. And then I'm also mounting the temporary folder from the host so that when you start more than one container they can share any data that is uh, saved in the temporary folder. And the temporary folder is, is used by all of the Jenkins slaves. And here, uh, 
I'm also adding the secret because the, the containers need the secret. And as you can see, the only difference between testing, staging and production environment is the label I set. Now when I deploy these, you will understand how it all works. All of the slaves are added. And again, if I add, if I add here, we only have one node in the, the Docker Swarm, but if I add more nodes, all of these will be automatically added as slaves. And all of them will be added with the label that I, I used when I created the service. Now let's create the first job. Now in this case I will use uh, the GitHub organization plugin which basically will scan my account and it will add all of the projects that have a Jenkins file in the root directory and it will add them as new jobs. This is really convenient so you don't have to uh, add the jobs manually. In this case I want to add only the CD demo so I will enter the, the filter here. But uh, if you don't enter in any filter, it will scan all of the projects in your account. And if there is a, if there is a, a Jenkins file in the root directory, it will add it as a new job. Now here you need to select your um, GitHub credentials, because if you don't, uh, the GitHub API has a limitation and it will not allow you to scan uh, all of the projects in, in your account. And this is all we need here, so when I click on save, it will scan my account, filtered by the, the CD demo name. It detected that there is a Jenkins file and now it, now it will create a job for it. Now the build is complete and the application is deployed so we can access it on the IP of the production server. Now the next step would be to uh, use some GitHub webhooks. This means that basically every time when you make a change in the master um, in the project it will trigger a new build. This is, um, this is an essential part of the continuous uh, delivery workflow because it doesn't require any manual intervention. Okay. To be able to create the webhooks automatically from Jenkins, it is, um, it is requiring a secret text as a password. You see, it doesn't show any of the my existing GitHub uh, account credentials, so I need to uh, um, create So now what it, what it does is it creates a token in my GitHub account and with this token I can use Jenkins to uh, create and delete um, webhooks. Okay, it's working. And then I will just re-register all webhooks. Okay, first I need to save it. And now if I go in the project settings, it should show the webhook. And here there is a problem. Jenkins added its internal IP address because it's behind the router 
and we need to uh, change this and also uh, make sure that github can access the jenkins uh, server on a, on a given ip port and here i'm using this really nice tool that allows me to open ports on the router without without even accessing the settings page i have already installed it so if i run it on the jenkins master it will show you that the external port in the command which is 8081 is mapped to 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 the IP address of the Jenkins master on port 80 so if I use this as an endpoint in the github settings and then uh, any changes on the application will trigger a new build So now let's change the application and see what happens. Let's see if the, the continuous delivery really works. And now in a second this will trigger a new build. And there it is. After the long wait, the pipeline is complete and the new application is deployed.